evangelist was transported and was found at Azotus. Do you remember in the Bible? He was transported. But many of you came here in a bus or in a car today. Why didn't you wait for the Holy Spirit to transport you from your hotel to this place? Tell me. You, you could have come all the way without getting on the airplane. Like Philip. You just say, I'm going by the Holy Spirit when he carries me. But you use the instrument. You use the plane. Did God say you must use a plane? There's no scripture where he said you must use a plane. So if he doesn't transport you by his spirit like that, you will use the next instrument that is available. Is that right? That's what I'm trying to tell you. If God doesn't specifically say, this is what you're going to do, this, because he overrules. I mean, he's boss. Okay? He's boss. He can say, this is how I want you to do this. Then you follow and start walking in that direction. But until then, use what he gave you. Are you hearing me? Use what he gave you. How did you dress yourself this evening? Did the Holy Spirit put his jacket on you? Did the Holy Spirit knot your tie? Did he put your shoes on your feet? No. You used your mind. The same way you used your mind there is what I'm telling you. You can use your mind to multiply your finances. Do you know that so many people who don't even know how much they have. So they can't even say, I want to multiply. What do you want to multiply? Where are you? Can you see it? You have to know where you are to know where you want to go. So, all right, where are you now? And what do you want to do? You're going to use your mind. You're going to create the visions. Create the visions. What you see is so important. Okay, let me show you more scriptures. This will help you. Joshua, the book of Joshua. <laughs> Joshua chapter 6. I want you to read from verse 1 into verse 2. 1 to go. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. He said, see, I have, he didn't say I shall give. He said, I have given into your hand. He's sending, he's sending Joshua to go and take over Jericho. And he says, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. <laughs> he says, see. How is Joshua supposed to see it? His imagination. He says, I want you to see it in your mind. See it. If you don't see it, you can't have it. He wants you to see it. See it. Can you see the 1,000 new members? Can you see the 5,000 new members? Can you see that you're taking over the city? Can you see that healing? Can you see that miracle? Can you see that change? See! In January, I said, God, I want to give... Ten million dollars at once. I want to give it. I want to give it. I want to give ten million dollars at once. January. I said, ah, before the end of the year, I'm going to do it. Three months only. In three months, I did it. Are you hearing me? Yes, because I said, I want. You measure what you do. By your giving, know what you get. You know? So I said, no. I, I give one million dollars. Uh, yeah, give two million dollars. But I want to give ten million dollars at once. I don't want to do it like part, part, part. I want to give ten million dollars at once. I want to do it. I want to do it. So I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. And 
three months later, I did it. I said, wow, yes, I want to set my sail and fix another amount. How much I want to give. I like to do it at once. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? In your finances, that's what you do. Don't say, I want to get this amount. How much do you want to give? Do you understand? Because I can get anything I want. I can get anything. It's what I want to give that I'm concerned about. Because I can get anything. But how, how much can my faith release? How much can my faith let go? How much can I let go at once? That's what counts. That's where the test of your faith comes. It's not how much God can give you. But how much can you give? How much can you let go? That's what the test of your faith is. Are you following what I'm telling you? So you set your goal. Can you see it? You have to be specific. I was specific. The first time I said I wanted to give $1 million years ago, I, I set my goal. I said, I want to give God $1 million. I want to give $1 million. How am I going to do it? I will do it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do it. And I set myself for it. And God was blessing. And I was ready. And I was working at it. I'm going to give God $1 million. I'm going to do it. And the time came, I got my $1 million and I gave it. And I was so excited. I said, I've given $1 million to God. I'm excited. And then years following, it was now easier and easier for me. I could commit $1 million to anything. And say, okay, I'll give a million dollars. Or I'll give $2 million. I was, I, then I said, no, I can't continue giving $1 million, $2 million. I want to give God $10 million at once. I want to do it. And then I did it. And I said, okay, so I'm going to set my goal. I want to set my goal for another one. How much am I going to give to God at once? I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to plan it. See, that's what you do. All right? But if you, if you stay there thinking, oh, God, give me money. Listen, that's, I told you you are very rich already. The problem is not what will God give you. He has already given you so much. You are rich. There's not one Christian that is poor. The question is, how much will you let out from what he has blessed you with? What can you release? What can you let go? What can you let go? It's important, you know, that I always, I always wanted a situation where if I came in among God's people, I could do things that mattered. I wanted, to, I wanted to be responsible. I wanted to be a financially responsible person. I wanted to, to be able to help in a big way. Not that when something is needed, I start looking around like, who's going to do it? I didn't want that. How does God want you to be? He wants you to be responsible. He wants you to stand up for what you believe in. Like they say, put your money where your mouth is. It's important. It's important. Thank you. Are you hearing me? It's important. How do you, where, how do you want to do, where do you want to go? How far do you want to go? Ask someone near you. See, how far do you want to go? Did you get an answer? Did you get an answer? How far do you want to go? I'll show you how to practice it. Are you listening? You know, many times, many times, when it comes to giving, the many, many ministers who think that they are preaching is a giving. <laughs> They think that they are preaching, therefore, is a giving. So they have given. They say, I've given my whole life. <laughs> That's not wise. That's not wise. That's not wise. Your financial prosperity depends very much on your financial seeds. When I give, I recognize that God blesses and multiplies back to me the seed that I planted. 
So when I give to God, I know that I'm going to have a harvest of what I planted. So I'm smart. So if I give something to God, if I give an amount of money to God, my mind is on how much am I going to get? It's going to be a lot. So I'm not losing when I give to God. No, I'm not losing. I'm not fool. How can you give to God and lose? So the minister of God, the pastor, the minister, whether you're evangelist or whatever your ministry is, understand this. One of the first things you must train yourself to do is to give and to give and to give. It's easy, it's easy when you say that you're giving your life. Meanwhile, you haven't died. <laughs> if you say you are so in love, you will reap love in return. You cannot get money for love. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow only seeds of love, you will reap seeds of love. You see, people will love you so much. You know, oh, we love you. They will love you. You will enjoy love, but you'll be broke. That's why I sow financial seeds. I sow financial seeds because I don't want to be loved broke. I want to make sure that I have a financial harvest continually. It's very important. I was watching a program one day where, where I, was, I was just sitting there watching the TV and as a minister of God, I'd never met him, but I'd, I'd seen his magazines before. So, and I'd read his magazines. He's a great man of God. So while he was on TV, he said that um, he was going to hold a crusade somewhere and was talking about how they needed some money. So as he spoke about the need for the money, uh, I thought, well, I can help. I know something about the place that he is going to hold this crusade. Uh, I would have liked like to go there myself. You know, but the Spirit of God has not permitted me to go so far. So I'm going to go in Him. Simple. So, so I thought, okay, they put a telephone number there on the screen. And I picked up my phone and I called the number. I said, hello. And they responded. I said, I just saw your program on TV and um, that you're going to such and such a city for a crusade. And they said, yes. I said, please, um, uh, you asked if the viewers could, could donate some money. I want to give some money. And um, they said, okay, um, who is on the line? I said, I'm Pastor Chris. And uh, she said, uh, hold on a minute. <laughs> so she called the man in charge of uh, partners. And the man came on the line. Uh, hello? And I said, I greeted. I said, um, he said, yes, well, what did you say you wanted? I said, I just want to give for the crusade you have. And he said, uh, and you are who? I said, I'm Pastor Chris. He said, Pastor Chris, is this the Pastor Chris we know? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but I am Pastor Chris. I don't know. He said, well, uh, uh, how much do you want to give? I said, mm, I want to give $250,000. And he said, oh, really? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, uh, in what... He wanted to know which dollars. <laughs> you know they're different dollars. I said, which one do you prefer? <laughs> so, so, 
So anyway, we came to the conclusion of the higher one, which was better for him. I said, so that's, that's more advantageous for you, so I'll give it to you in that currency. So he said, okay, okay. Now, after the telephone call, I was with Reverend Ray and Reverend Tom, and they were telling me they watched a program on TV and that those guys are going to such and such a place. I said, oh, I saw the program. Then he said, um, uh, they had watched the program before, I think a day or so before, and that they said they needed $300,000. I said, no wonder. When I said I was giving them $250,000, the spirit asked me to make it three hundred. dollars And I thought, I don't even know them. <laughs> you know? I thought, I don't even know them. Let me start from here. Then I said, that means that the Spirit of God wanted me to give them everything. So I said, okay, no problem. So later on, I sent the extra $50,000 to make it all $300,000. Okay? Now, what, the reason I said that is this. I'm also a preacher. I could have said, well, he's holding crusades, I'm holding crusades, so we all need money. I could have said that. But I'm not stupid. I know that this is the way to go. I'm blessed. How could they have such a need and I'm here could have sent them ten thousand dollars it would have been big but God wanted me to give them all the money they asked for they said they wanted three hundred thousand and I wasn't asking what about there are many of us who might respond that's not my way of thinking and that's not the way I think are you hearing me so I'm, I'm showing you how to take your steps See, come out of the limitation. Let nothing limit you. God is not a citizen of the country where you live. So he's not limited by the economic situation of that country. He's not limited by that. What can you see? What can you see? How far do you want to go? What can you see? No, I've taught our people. They're, they're wonderful. I walk into a meeting. When was this? this February. I walk into a meeting and I, I say to them, I want you to give some money for this, 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 and this work I want to do. In five minutes, I have over 15 million dollars. All right? I have to stop them. If I ask for money in our ministry, it's, it's, it's amazing. If I don't stop them, it's just going to go on. I have to stop them. Every time I say, oh, if I speak and say, we want this money, I don't have to wait. The money comes in like this and like this. I have to say, stop, stop, stop. I have to stop them. That's, that's the way a ministry should be like. That's the way. That's the way. But you see, I've trained them through the years. Through the years. Okay? To the point they have the understanding. They have the understanding. And you train people by precept and by example. See, you have to train them with example. If the pastor doesn't give, how will they learn how to give? See, how will they learn how to give? You train them by example. And then they become like you. They, they want to be responsible for anything. Do you know this program, this program that's here, I have not yet had an opportunity to put any money inside. This program, and it's cost a lot of money already. 
And I haven't put anything inside this program. Can you see it? So think about it. I come here and I hold this kind of thing and I have not had to put any money inside because money is everywhere around me. So it's something I'm showing you. Something I'm showing you and teaching you. See, I, I had to have this understanding from while I was much younger. I started seeing these things. And you see, your life is a life that's programmed. You're going to be the manifestation of the programming that's in your spirit. And that's why it's important that if you've been programmed in a way that has not given you good enough results, you can change it by reprogramming yourself with the information that I've given you. Use this information. You'll be amazed at the results. You'll be amazed at the results. Hallelujah. So that's what, when I told you that if I go to any country, I don't have to carry money. The reason is, money comes everywhere. Everywhere I go, money comes to me. How can that be? Read about Jesus. Find out how many times he was raising funds. How many times? Why would he have so much? He's son of God. You are serving him. Why would you be in need? Why, why would you be in need? Suffering to serve him. He doesn't want that. He can pay his bills. Think about it. Yeah, he can pay his bills. Trust him. He can pay his bills. Trust him. Have the vision. Have the focus. Have the vision. Are you hearing me? Have it. Have it in your spirit. Okay? And to get there, instead of praying, oh God, give me vision. Sit down with your chair or lie down <laughs> and start seeing it. Start seeing it. If you see the wrong thing, so no, 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 no. That's not what I want to see. Start again. Start again and focus. What can you see? What can you see? Even as I speak, what I'm passing to you is vision. See, vision. What can you see? What are you seeing? If you see people who will not give in your congregation, that's what you will have. But if you see them as givers, if you see them as blessers, that's what you will have. That's what you will have. Hello. What do you see? What do you see? Seeing is important. Seeing is important. And it's the scene of imagination. That's why he said to him, see, I have given you Jericho. See. See it. Once it's in your mind and you know it, you're ready to go. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Look at verse 17. What you see is what you get. You know, that's, that, that's one of the key things. You know, uh, Kenneth E. Hagen, a minister of God for many years, taught on the message of faith. This is just a simple thing that he was teaching. How to see what you want. That's what faith is about. That's what faith is about. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's sight. It is a substance, calling substance, calling real. What you hope for, hope is what you see afar off in your mind. It's an expectation. Seeing your expectation as real. That's just what I'm teaching in other words, in simpler words. That's what faith is. Faith is calling real what you hope for. Hope is expectation. What is expectation? There are thoughts in your mind that you expect to happen. Isn't that simple? So what do you see in your mind that you expect to happen? What would you want to happen? That you can now pass from hope to call it real and say, I got it. I have it. And you start declaring in the name of Jesus, I have it. This is going to happen. And that's just what I'm teaching. 
So I'm only using words, symbols, a language that is in your everyday life. Praise God. All right, let's look at that simple scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17. Can you read it for me? Want to go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is the simple word I want you to see there. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new crea a creation. The old King James says creature. A new creation. All things are. Not shall pass away. All things are passed away. Behold. That word is key. He says behold. He says see. All things are become new. See. That the cancer is no longer there. See. That you are a new creation. See. Hallelujah. See. As long as you think that you were born that way. You're going to live a lower life. See. Behold. All things are become new. So you're going to be asking. Apostle. You're going to be asking them. What do you see? What do you see? Can you see yourself walking? What do you see? Can you see yourself with a new job? What do you see? Glory to God. What do you see? What can you see? Wow, we're still very few. I said I can see the stadium full of people. I can see it. A few years later, we were packing out stadiums. I said, I can see, I can see, I can see. I see people coming. They are coming from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. I can see it. What can you see? And you know what? Can I explain further to you? I began to enjoy my visions. I started enjoying it. I will hurry to get a place where I can lie down and see my visions. I started enjoying seeing them. I was living in a different world. I will see myself preaching to many people and I'll be there. But when I open my eyes, everything is normal. So I like to see. So I close my eyes and see. I can see myself on that crusade ground. I can see myself on that platform. I can see myself preaching. Glory to God. Don't wait for a vision to come from heaven. Use the instrument that God gave you. Use it to glorify God. Use it. Use it. What's going to happen when you get back? How long? How long should you see? Sit down again for a second. Remind yourself that you can create whatever you want. You're a child of God. You can make whatever you want. Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believes. Isn't that for you? You think it's for somebody else? All things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. Question is, what do you want? All things are possible. I can do anything. I can achieve anything. What do you want? How far do you want to go? 
I can do anything. The world is mine. You've got, to, you've got to remember this. This is reality. The world is mine. And when I say that, I mean it. The world belongs to me. You say, ah, Pastor Chris, the world belongs to you. Of course. Who do you think I am? I am the seed of Abraham. I know who I am. This whole world was given to Abraham and his seed. And the Bible says if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed and therefore heirs according to the promise. I'm the seed of Abraham. The world is mine. Forget about what they tell you about oh, this is this. Listen, it doesn't matter which country. It doesn't matter. Is there anybody who has uh, something that is tying him to the ground? To say that this ground is connected to you. So the whole world is mine. Say it with me. You see, that's why all those around me can't have the mentality of poverty. No, they can't. How could they? Where will that mentality come from? No. No. We don't belong in this world. We think differently. And this you must Communicate to your brethren, your brothers and sisters in your church. You must let them understand that the world is theirs. Listen, in the world, they're talking about helping the poor. All right? They keep talking about spreading the wealth. They will never spread the wealth. Forget it. They say, spread the wealth. There's too much difference between the rich and the poor. There will always be. That's real. So they say, we've got to take care of the poor in our society. Which one do you think you belong to? When they start talking about the poor and, and measuring people with how much they re receive from their work, from their job, from the businesses. And you look at yourself and you say, how much am I worth? How much am I worth? You measure yourself by how much they pay you at the end of a month. Is that how you measure your life? You've made a mistake. You don't belong in that group they call poor. Don't measure yourself with those currencies. Measure yourself with what Jesus said about you. What did he say about you? All things are yours. That's what he said about you. That's what he said. And once you accept it, it goes to work. But if you don't accept it, it cannot work. Remember, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. If you don't believe, it will not work. It cannot save you if you don't believe. It only saves those who believe. If you don't believe, even though God has all the power, his power is in his message. If that message is believed, it will work. If you don't believe it, it will not work.